Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll discuss something about how to approach to a cyanotic heart disease. And before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you haven't already downloaded our awesome app, uh, please download it. We have stuff uh, on the app, which is as low as, uh, you know, 100 rupees. Uh, we have courses beginning from that price. So please have a look at the app. So uh, all the things are in the uh, description below. So firstly, you have to understand that for CHD, uh, congenital heart disease okay congenital heart disease age of presentation is very important age of presentation is very important and that is why uh, there are multiple diseases like uh, you know if the presentation is on the day of life one if the patient is born and the cyanotic heart disease is presented then it is more likely to be something like tga hlhs obstructed tapvc or vein of galen malformation all this abnormalities you see on the day of life one uh, if there is also uh, you know big abnormalities like truncus arteriosus even truncus arteriosus then uh, even tricuspid atresia then then epstein's anomaly now now epstein's anomaly has a very very you know differential presence like Epstein's anomaly might be present in a newborn and Epstein's anomaly might go undiagnosed in patients in their adulthood because Epstein's anomaly has a huge plethora of, uh, you know, involvement. And that is why what happens is that Epstein anomaly goes undiagnosed. That is why if the mild Epstein's anomaly usually goes undiagnosed. Now, day of life, four to seven, you diagnose, uh, you know, tetralogy of phallate, you diagnose DORV, double outlet, right ventricle. So all this is, uh, you know, diagnosed at the day of life four to seven. Once the ductus closes, all the issues in this patients, you know, begins when ductus closes, and even this uh, two anomalies can present in this age, the tricuspid atresia and truncus arteriosus after the ductus closes. Then even the unobstructed TAPVC, unobstructed TAPVC might present in the first week of life. So usually the Cyanotic heart disease usually present very early on. Then at age of three months, you usually diagnose something like AVSD. Then at the age of six months, you usually diagnose something like VSD. And then later on, more than two, two years, two to ten years, even some patients are diagnosed with ASD in their adulthood. So it is very uncommon to, you know, very, very easily find this patient. Plus, when you have patients of congenital mitral stenosis, when you have patients of congenital aortic stenosis, these patients usually do not get diagnosed at birth. So this is the age of presentation where CHD presents and then how I will tell you how do we uh, present. So firstly, uh, in a patient with CHD, you do chest X-ray and SpO2. Obviously, if there is cyanosis, if there is no cyanosis, according to that, you can, you know, diagnose. So imagine that you have a cyanotic heart disease. Okay, you have a cyanotic heart disease and you go for chest x-ray. So chest x-ray might show you two things. One is cardiomegaly. And second is no cardiomegaly. Okay, the heart size is normal. So the next thing we will see is pulmonary blood flow. Okay, so pulmonary blood flow is increased or pulmonary blood flow is either normal or decreased. Okay, so increase pulmonary blood flow with cardiomegaly is historically seen in it transposition of great arteries and usually when we talk of TGA it is usually DTGA we do not you know because LTGA is rare that is why whenever we talk uh, about TGA it is DTGA and other uh, you know there are also transposition physiologies so transposition physiologies all this will be diagnosed in the form of you know PBF increased pulmonary blood flow with cardiomegaly and decreased pulmonary blood flow with cardiomegaly is seen with Epstein's anomaly Epstein's anomaly or it is seen in tricuspid atresia. If there is tricuspid atresia or if there is Epstein's anomaly, you have massive, massive cardiomegaly. There is absolutely massive cardiomegaly with Himalayan P waves and it is a huge box-shaped heart at birth and uh, this is what the presentation of Epstein's anomaly might be in cases of severe uh, you know, Epstein's anomaly. Now, other three things that I want you to know is that uh, if you have no cardiomegaly, then a uh, normal pulmonary blood flow okay then with reduced pulmonary blood flow and the third one is associated with pulmonary vascular disease so pulmonary vascular disease is there 
so when it is associated with pulmonary vascular disease or pulmonary venous hyperemia so increased pulmonary blood flow you will keep it for you know sake of ease Incre increased pulmonary blood flow so normal pulmonary blood flow is seen in anomalous drainage anomalous systemic drainage to left atrium this is the exact opposite of tapvr in which you know the veins get all, all the inlet of the uh, heart is the only right atrium that is why the sputo in all four uh, you know, chambers is same in TAPVC. This is another condition where SpO2 in all four chambers is same because the source is one. And this is one of the condition. In decreased pulmonary blood flow, historic example, tetralogy of phthalate. Tetralogy of phthalate never has cardiomegaly. Tetralogy of phthalate never has congestive cardiac, cardiac failure. Okay, it is very rare. It might occur due to collaterals. But you do not see uh, cardiomegaly and you do not see CCF in patients of tetralogy of phthalate. Or uh, you can see decreased pulmonary blood flow in cases of pulmonary atresia or pulmonary stenosis with v, uh, no VSD or v, with intact ventricular septum, with no VSD or intact ventricular septum. And in cases of increased pulmonary blood flow, there is something known as obstructive TAPVC. Obstructive TAPVC, usually infracardiac is the one that gets obstructed. And obstructive TAPVC or HLHS, HLSS, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, HLHS. Okay, it is associated with Edward syndrome, it is associated with Turner syndrome, it is associated with Jacobson syndrome. That is why the important things about HLHS is this and the surgery you do for HLHS is on the Norwood surgery. So that is very important. And this was the primary thing that you see in a patient with cyanotic heart disease. And this is how you diagnose a patient with cyanotic heart disease. And all this is a basic idea for you to get how to diagnose cyanotic heart disease. If you like such more contents in detail, videos are available at my channel. And there are no bullshit videos. So I hope you like the video. I'll see you in the next one.